sweet reward awaits us through these doors. I just couldn't wait for it to be four o'clock in the yeah, morning. Out of their mind. What are they thinking? My heart dropped, my stomach dropped. UFO activity uh, north of Moab. This dude's crazy, but all right, kind of like it. I'm like, well, here we go. I just want to say rest stops aren't very restful. It's like 12.40 in the morning. And the last time I looked at a clock, it was 11. So I've tossed and turned for like an hour and 40 minutes. And just trucks pull in, you know, it, all the time at any given time. And they're not quiet. If it's the end is one thing, but then when they stop, like the air brakes, it, psh, it lets out. And this last one here, it rolled in having some other kind of crazy, like beeping just noise that I don't, I don't know is entirely necessary to be coming into a rest stop where people are trying to sleep. <laughs> on the floor of a bus. <laughs> anyway, I'm done talking right now. I'm gonna try to toss and turn for several more hours and hopefully get some sleep. Okay, I take back what I said. Rest stops are very restful and I'm grateful for them. I just really would appreciate some sleep stops. Good morning. We are beginning of day three of bus day and journey back home. I'm in the same spot I was about 12 hours ago last night at a rest area in Utah. I really needed to take a break. Um, I got stuck in the push through and a lot of that was I wanted to get out of the dusty, dusty desert in the place I wanted to be if something had happened. Um, and to be perfectly frank, I, uh, I spent my fair share of time in the deserts in the Middle East and uh, I really just had no desire to be there any longer than uh, what I had. I can see snow caps in the background over there. I'll do a pan here shortly um, so you can see that too. But I really want to recap uh, some of what happened yesterday. At 9 a.m., about 100 miles west of Las Vegas, I stopped at a little gas station area and then I kind of did a little stretching business and. Uh, went to get in the bus, turned the key, nothing. The bus would not start. My heart dropped, my stomach dropped. It was, um, you know, the, the worst thing happening that I, I, I just didn't want to happen. Um, I went in the troubleshooting mode uh, and I'm like, okay, I, I started looking at the electronics. I'm like, I, I saw, still saw a light from where I had my car charger in. I was like, oh no, did I, did I leave like the lights on or something? I wasn't even gone that long. Um, I tried a couple times, just nothing, not even a sound of a thing. Like the uh, a light on the dash went up and that was it. So then I went around to the back of the bus where you can start it from the back of there too. Um, nothing. And I was just in a, oh no, like, I'm not gonna say some of the words, but it was, it was, it was, it was rough. Um, I find that wasn't the first time, uh, or no, that was the first time. It wasn't the last time. I did it a second time yesterday too, after my visit with Noah, he had left to go to a, a practice he had and it was like high fricking noon in the Las Vegas desert and it was hot. Um, and it just, it wouldn't start. I, I was able to successfully troubleshoot it. I found out what it was and I'm gonna show you inside here in a moment. All right, front of the bus. So this bus has installed on it a, uh, a safety measure that after the bus driver or drivers were finished doing their, their trips and they have 30 seconds after they turn off the bus to go to the back of the bus and push This freaking button here, that button yesterday, oh my goodness. So here's why. It came up yesterday. Day one after getting the bus 
and starting to go through. Um, it's something I just, I forgot about. I was already sleep deprived when I got to Jason's because I was so excited Monday night. I just couldn't wait for it to be four o'clock in the morning to go and do the journey. And then it was four o'clock in the morning. I'm like, well, here we go. Um, and sleeping on airplanes and the other stuff, just it, there wasn't much of it. So like he had mentioned it to me, but I kind of like went by the wayside. I was like, yeah, yeah, like, push a button, cool. <laughs> Um, so the, all the first day, like I turned the bus off and I didn't push the button and I had no problem restarting the bus. It wasn't until day two that that kicked into play. Now I haven't start, tried to start the bus today, so that's going to come up shortly here, but, um, everything's been, been great so far outside that stupid button. And that's going to be one of the first things to go. Um, uh, another side note is we are fixing the sleeping arrangement and just look, I've been doing this so Spartan guys. Uh, don't, don't do, don't do what I have done. Um, blanket, towel, like I've used other clothes I brought as pillows and it was just a shivery, shivery Still cold super night. tired. I have not set myself up for success on this with a sleeping setup. Um, warmth last night, uh, I slept from probably about 9 to 11, woke up just shivering and I pulled out good old uh, trusty Jurassic Park. I'm going to do a little pan here so you can see some of the mountains and stuff too behind as I, as I chat. And I mean, it is really, really scenic. Um, Jurassic Park has always been a go-to for me uh, if I've had trouble sleeping. Now, I don't really watch it. I put it on, and something about the sound of just the music track that they have and then the <laughs> dinosaurs roaring uh, puts me to sleep. Um, same thing with my, my eldest son, Alex. He, same way. Um, can fall asleep to Jurassic Park, of all things. Uh, so I know that helps some because I don't remember hearing all of it, but still just, it was a night of uncomfortableness and shivering on the hard steel bus floor. Um, I saw a couple outside this morning walking around, like once the sun came up and I just couldn't wait for the sun to get up to get warmer. And I got maybe an extra hour and a half of sleep. So today I'm going to transition up. to, there's a, um, I'm about 50 miles from about 70. There's a, a Supercenter Wally World, uh, about 30 miles up from there. So I'm gonna make that 80 mile something trek. First and foremost, I'm gonna get uh, a yoga mat and then a, a heavier blanket, uh, maybe even a pillow. Um, I didn't wanna check a bag. I could have paid 30 bucks or whatever to check a bag, but I was stubborn. I was like, no, I'm gonna backpack it. I'm gonna do this like Spartan style. I don't need all this stuff. And I'm paying for that now, I really am. My, my rest and sleep have suffered so, so greatly because of it. So today we're gonna fix that. I still wanna make some distance, but the goal today is to, to do some things right, get a broom, sweep up to some of the inside a dusty bus. And, and also um, food. Um, living a vegan lifestyle and trying to push through the distance like this and relying on gas station and truck stops, your options are slim. So. Um, I've, I've had plenty of water, so I made sure to stay really, really hydrated because I'm um, used to that and I know from previous experiences of deserts to stay hydrated. But here's what I've subsided on pretty much yesterday. I think that's in there. I've had cliff bars, like seeds and nuts, a couple bananas, um, almonds, and then like I had like no greens, so I just chugged to like a green machine thing and um, not, not enough sustenance for yesterday, so. Um, I want to find a Chipotle. I really enjoy Chipotle and uh, the after effects I may not enjoy so much. I have to find a place to stop and uh, <laughs> that business. Probably too much information. You know, but I'm going to stop. I, I'm getting into a ramble mode. Uh, into a ramble mode? Uh, when I get not enough sleep, I tend to ramble. So uh, signing off. Here we go. Well, you know what? Let's let's put the keys in. Signing off. Here we go. I'm, I'm getting into a ramble mode. Signing off. Here we go. Well, you know what? Let's let's put the keys in. Well, you know what? Let's let's put the keys in. And yes, we started right up because you know why? I pushed the button. Uh, the noise you hear, called a governor, I believe it is, which monitors the air brakes, and that sound is showing that they are uh, powering up. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do a quick circle check too. The, uh, the governor, uh, hello governor. <laughs> the governor is still filling up the air brakes with the compressor. Um, I noticed some truck drivers yesterday had like a little like back kind of thing and they were walking around hitting their tires. Uh, probably a good tire check, so maybe I need a mini bat. I don't know. Maybe a good old kick. 
or just a look to see that tires are still like in good shape. You know, my foot bounced off that pretty well. Kick the tires, light the fires, kick the tires. All right, we're about to embark out. Hopefully the governor buzzer has uh, finished. Do, 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 do. And it has, the buzzer is off. Both gauges are about 100. Um, that's where we wanna be. So kind of funny thing that I uh, haven't talked about yet, but when I watched uh, uh, the video from that Brittany did yesterday. I know like in the moment, like when I was there on Jason's property and I show up with a backpack um to california i was communicating with him the entire time with what was happening on my on my fiasco just to get to his property yeah we had uh, uh some pretty cool talks and he was he was really really informative uh, about going over everything there's a moment in there where he looks and you can see it he's like this dude's crazy but all right kind of like it i have had zero experience of driving a bus before I drove this bus off of his property. The first time I drove a bus was after I bought the bus and drove it off his property. It definitely requires a lot more mental focus and just spatial awareness and what you're doing. And the one piece of advice I was given, uh, and that was the, uh, Jason, he's like, why turns? I was like, cool, why turns? So, uh, so far that served me well. I did also explain to him that he is taking a bus that's 30 years old. Yeah. Halfway across the country, he understands what he's doing. He's got his fingers really, really yes. crossed. Yes. All, all the good vibes and attention. All, all the good vibes and attention. All, all the good vibes and attention. Did you guys see the moment where, where Jason was like, dude. This guy's kind of crazy, but. I like it. I have full faith that if an expert diesel mechanic who just does this for his living, I have full faith that if he didn't think this was possible, he wouldn't have allowed me to do it. I know he expressed like, hey, just a heads up, this is what you're getting into. But if he didn't think it was possible, I think he would have said something or expressed it in some way, shape or form. Uh, the fact that he was like, all right, man, uh, tells me that he believes it to be doable and possible even on this 30 year old bus. We're being bold, you know? We wanted, we wanted something for our family and we're taking the steps to do it. And sometimes those steps to get the thing you want for you and your life and your experience here, they require great leaps of faith. And other people may <laughs> look at you and be like, they are out of their minds. What are they thinking? And you know what? They're, what they're thinking is they're going after something they believe in, something that they they want to experience, and just outside of their their comfort zone and and what they're used to. And that's a it's a great opportunity for growth and learning. And that's that's just what we're doing here. Um, and having some fun. You gotta have fun too. Uh, that's it. So set myself up for success with sleep. Clean up my room here because it's a mess and eat some good food. That's it for now. We will uh, see you down the road. supplied up and back on the bus I'm about to get first meal going down uh, gonna keep it pretty pretty simple supply stuff a sleeping bag a yoga mat a little pillow um, good good I got this little fun castle bucket cuz I was like let me get a little bucket so I can throw some water in there and um, I got some baking soda a little bit of vinegar and a lemon to make my own little just kind of makeshift uh, eco-friendly uh, cleaning solution for the bus and then just some like microfiber towels. Food though, first meal, what's it gonna be? 
apples because I don't have anything to scoop the peanut butter with. Um, I'm gonna use apple scoop, put it on some bread with a banana. And I was a little bit skeptical about like getting some sort of like, like greens mixture. Um, so I just got a couple of bottles of these. I figured one today, one tomorrow. Uh, status on Chipotle, nearest one is three hour, three and a half hours away. So uh, dinner at Chipotle, that's what we're looking for. <laughs> it's, it's about the simple things, you know? <laughs> All right, talk soon. So use caution when filling with the high delivery system, which that is what this is. So I'm just gonna kind of go a little bit slower here instead of full blast. Yeah, I think you have to like pace it out like while it settles into the tank with the high delivery system that this has. Um, and the reason I chose Love's, one, I've always liked it on road trips. Uh, two, they have showers here, which I thought like came with if you paid you know, for fuel. Sure, come on, take a shower because you're dusty and you could use it. Um, but that's not the case. It's $13 for a shower, so I don't want to do that. I'll, uh, I'll be dusty a little bit longer and I'll find somewhere and spray myself down with a hose or jump in water or something. And I got a towel. Almost there. That's gonna take a bit. to do some enjoying of the view. You'll see why in a moment I'm crouched down in this really, really strange position. <laughs> um, it's super, super windy where I am and I'm knocked in a little thing here. Uh, what I found though, it's the uh, Salt Flats. Uh, it's an area on 70 uh, in Utah uh, on the eastern edge of it. And it's essentially a geologist Trevor tro treasure trove. The area I'm about to show you at several points in time in the millions of years of history it's been here, has been uh, a seashore uh, with a delta within it. Uh, it's been a jungle, a, trop or a trop yeah, tropical forest at some point in time uh, where dinosaurs lived, roamed, died. The tropical thing just blew my mind because wait, I'm gonna stand up now. It's gonna be really windy, so you're not gonna hear, but I'm just gonna show you uh, what's behind me. what you see up there instead of just kind of growing um, straight like this. It's super, super cool. Parkour. Hey, I'm still out in the salt flats real quick. I know in a video you saw a gentleman working out. I ended up overhearing his conversation. Uh, he's a trucker on the road and he wants to start his own uh, channel showing that trucking lifestyle can be 
uh, you can be fit and he's using just the natural beauty of what's around him to work out uh, his name's Tony he's a musician uh, trucker right now um, he's gonna share a little bit about what he's trying to do what's up everybody so like I was telling I forgot you what's your name again Joshua Joshua, Joshua my yeah guy. no worries man uh, you know, like I was telling Joshua here is that you know in this industry trucking uh, you know there's a lot of uh, one of the big 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 things that a lot of truckers deal with uh, I've been I've been uh caught up in it myself as well. We deal with a lot of depression. And it depends, it depends on circumstances. Circumstances, me personally, you know, it's always been just temporary, but there's a lot of guys that are just going through it because you're out on the road, you're alone. And a lot of times you can find yourself, you know, I'm gonna just say it, you can find yourself getting out of shape and losing the things that bring you confidence. And so what I'm trying to do is uh, pull my money where my mouth is because I know that in this industry, it could be a flashy one. It could be a fun one. You could, you could go see all the best parts of America, meet all the different all the different types of people, they get complacent and it's easy to to lose it all as far as uh, your fitness and all that yeah. while trucking and so what happens is that you get caught up in like I don't know if it's sometimes, it's, sometimes you know you end up being in a place where it you know, happens the same thing that's pulling you away from being able to live that flashy lifestyle and so just look out for it I got my money to my money for my office my goal is to start a trucking channel where I vlog and I just show different types of exercises learn type of exercises so that now truckers, because the excuse has always been, oh, like, oh, there's no gym, oh, there's this, oh, there's that. Well, you don't need a gym, man. You got, you know, God already gave you your gym. He already placed it in front of you. Yeah. This is Utah. This is, and this is yeah. one of 50, one of 48 states that you could travel. Yeah. And it's gorgeous. And this meets any 24 hour fitness, any LA fitness. You have to be an outside styles guys, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Right, exactly. Uh, embrace trucking. Uh, appreciate truckers, because, you know, if you like, if you like to, uh, like clean yourself or you like to if you like to eat you know it's all thanks to truckers and so i feel like we're sometimes forgotten about no one really talks about our issues yeah so, well, with what uh, tony was just saying like um all the stuff that we get in our stores grocery food all the conveniences that we get and enjoy every day we just got to take a short car ride or not even we can have it delivered to our door that's all because of truck drivers that is um it, it's He's here. Money. I'm gonna be the savior. That's it. He's gonna be one to show you that this can be done and done in a very healthy, holistic fashion. That you can be and stay in excellent shape while doing a job that helps provide um, everyone in America with just the bare necessities, the things that we need in life. And I kind of pulled him out of his comfort zone. This is his actual first video yeah. talking about it. I'm gonna shoot it up over to him and um, yeah, uh, look for him when he has the link and stuff. We're gonna change information. Um, I'm gonna provide that all here. One last look at the uh, uh, sunglasses, Tony. I'll give him a seat on the road. So that was pretty sketchy uh, for a minute there. Uh, I'm on a six degree downgrade right now with a lot of sharp turns and the wind's been just battering me all over the place. And the door just couldn't take it anymore. Blew open, I'm on a curve doing like 60. Here, these are the curves that we just did. Door open and it winds more around the other way too. And I'm worried about like, oh my God, my stuff's gonna fly out of the bus. Um, luckily there was another one of those really nice view areas, so I was able to pull off on that and like I got real close to the edge of the road as I was braking, trying to manage like braking, slowing down, keeping everything inside of the bus. Uh, but yeah, we fixed it. Look, so back on the road, uh, while I'm stopped, like 
I, I honestly, I honestly wish I could just record this the entire time. The landscape is phenomenal. There's just such a diversity of geological formations all around and There's no way the video is to do adjust all the different colors, like your yellows and golds, and then your uh, reds, and then there's like grays as well. We're all formed during different uh, periods throughout the Earth's history. So that's really, really just fascinating. Note to self, um, at some point when bored and just want to look some stuff up, look up UFO activity uh, north of Moab on 70 in Utah. There is some sus stuff. That's all. Uh, well, all right, so specifically, there's like tents over there, and there was like one of those little like stops where you would see like, you know, UFO thingy things. Um, like a little thing just like advertising UFO, whatever. I didn't see what it was on the highway, but I just saw it. But there was this uh, black. Um, I think it was a Range Rover, it had Montana plates on it. And it was headed west, and it like flipped through, and then started heading east, and passed me. Well then like 10, 15 minutes later, the same vehicle passed me again. So it's patrolling the strip. We did it. Sweet reward awaits us through these doors. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, ho. Chipotle, oh my gosh. Grand Junction, Colorado made it here. Um, Chipotle, and yeah, it's game time. I just ate Chipotle, and it was fantastic, and I still have half of it left. Got the biggest scoop of guac ever, because I told the lady Chipotle I traveled 400 miles to, to go there, because the next closest one was so far away. Pico hot sauce is fantastic. So, for the night, we're in Grand Junction. Last thing left to do today that was a goal was uh, the sweep, which um, sun's going down. There's a rest area 40 something miles uh, east on 70, and there's a Walmart for tenths of a mile right there. I'm going left to the Walmart right there. I've heard they're fantastic to stay in as far as uh, um, this kind of, kind of stuff, as far as like van life, RV, camper, things like that. They're just safe spaces to, to kind of be in and great to, to camp out in for the night. So that's, that's where we're gonna end the night off.